Hi everyone, Bria here from Etched Actuarial and today we're talking all about how to create a resume that stands out for actuarial employers. Okay, so are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so first thing that you should add to your resume is a career profile. Now, many people don't include this and instead they often put a what is it called? An objective statement. They put an objective statement at the top of their resume telling the employer what they want. But the problem is that employers don't really care what you want, unfortunately. They care what they want. So your career profile is really a good way to show employers how you are a great fit for their team and how you can help them. So your career profile should really summarize you as a candidate and how you would make a good fit for the job. So it might include things like your education, your related experience, things like your exams you've passed, your technical skills. All that stuff is stuff that employers really want to know about. So it's important that you put that all in your career profile. It's only about three to four lines long and it just summarizes you really quickly. And this is important because if you haven't heard, really you only have about six seconds to make an impression on an employer. They, they have a lot of things they're doing. They have a lot of resumes to go through. So you don't get very long to make a good impression. If you can bring all those very, very good reasons why you make a good actuarial candidate right to the top of your resume in your career profile, it's going to make employers feel really intrigued when they read your resume and it's going to allow them to see why you would be a good candidate and then they'll continue reading. So career profile is really, really important. Okay, next up is actuarial exams. Have you ever wondered how you should add them to your resume? Well, let's look at my screen actually because that's the best place I can show you. So I'll share my screen here. So right here, I actually have a blog post. I will link to it in the description of this video, but it's all about how to add actuarial exams to your resume. But the main part I want you to look at is right here. This shows exactly how you should add them. As you can see, it clearly, and actually it should show exam P1, exam FM2. So you have both the SOA reference and the CAS reference for the exams there. I should fix that. But anyway, this is what it, it should look like on your resume. You want to say which exams you've passed and you always want to include which exam you are sitting for next. Only one exam, not two, not three, just your next exam that you're sitting for because that's going to show employers that you are still actively studying and trying to get even better and more qualified. So this is what it will look like on your resume. Now, if you have any unique situations, or even if you don't, really, I highly recommend you go check out this post because not only does it show you that, but it also has information here about how to add exam scores to your resume. If you scored really well and you want to add that to your resume, uh, it shows how you can add if you've only passed preliminary, uh, preliminary results. And, and down here, it talks about how to, what you should do in terms of removing your actuarial exams if you're in a non-actuarial position. So definitely go check out that post like now. <laughs> okay, stop sharing my screen now. So next thing that we're going to talk about are your job descriptions. Now, when you move on to the experience part of your resume, you're going to have descriptions of some of the things you've done in the past. The problem that most people run into is that their past experience or it doesn't show through how their past experience is related to the actuarial career. So employers kind of have to figure that out for themselves. They have to figure out how your cashier job or your tutoring job is relevant to an actuarial position. And most employers don't have the time to do that and they don't make the right connections. So what you have to do is show them for them. So you have to show them how your past experience is relevant to the actuarial career. One example of this is, or I don't want to say a bad example, but a common thing I see happening is just that people don't show that. I was working with someone a little while ago who was a rocket engineer. So he worked with rockets all day. He, he loved it, but he wanted to go into an actuarial position. 
So you might think at first glance or at first thought, whatever you would say there, um, that an, a rocket engineer isn't very similar to what an actuary does. And his whole resume was great. He had lots of experience. I think it was about nine years, but his resume was great for someone that was hiring a rocket engineer. And it didn't show how his experience was relevant to the actuarial career. So that was making it extremely difficult for him to find a job. He couldn't find one in the, in the actuarial field. So we worked together, we rearranged his resume, made sure that his past experience showed how he was relevant and like a relevant and very good candidate for actuarial positions. And he ended up getting an underwriting position. Now, personally, I think that he could have gotten an actuarial position, but he wanted to just take the underwriting position. And now that he's getting experience in an underwriting position, I'm sure he'll be able to transition into an actuarial position later on. An underwriter is kind of a stepping stone position. That's what I call it. It's very relevant to the actuarial career and provides a lot of very good experience and knowledge that will help someone get an actuarial position later on. So I'm confident he will be able to transition into an actuarial role, but that just goes to show how important your job descriptions are and you need to make sure you're doing that too. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to talk about here is technical skills. Now, if you don't know what technical skills you need as an actuary, I have a video all about that. Go down into the description of this video to get to that video. I'll, I'll leave a link to it there. But technical skills are something you definitely want to include on your resume. But many people just put technical skills under a technical skills section on their resume. And I recommend you do something a bit different. You do still want to have that technical skills section on your resume, but you also want to make sure that you are showing where you use those technical skills on the job. So you're actually going to put those in your job descriptions too. If you used Excel for one of your positions, you want to talk about that in your job descriptions so that employers can see that you have not only learned how to use these tools, but you also have used them on the job. And that kind of experience is so much more valuable than just taking a course or something like that in a certain technical software thing, whatever. So I highly recommend you just make sure that all your technical skills are also displayed in your job description area if possible, because that will help you stand out. Okay, so next week, I'm going to be talking all about LinkedIn profiles. Your LinkedIn profile is going to be fairly similar to your resume, but there are quite a few differences. So you'll find out what, that, what those are next week. We'll be talking all about your career or your profile on LinkedIn. But the first thing you have to do before you even get working on your LinkedIn profile is to get your resume together. They're so closely related, but um, it's just better to make sure that your resume is up to date first and then it's, it's so much easier to create your LinkedIn profile. In the Actuary Accelerator community, oh, I was going to show you this. If you are a member of the Actuary Accelerator community, I wanna show you where we have our resume course. So again, I'm just going to share my screen with you here. Um, so if you're a member of the Actuary Accelerator community, when you log in, you're going to come to this page. All you have to do is click here or go to this resources by category in the menu and then just go down to job resources. You're going to find a video or actually it's a course. It tells you step by step how to create a resume that really stands out for actuarial employers. So it will show you more about how to create a really good career profile. It'll talk about how you can highlight certain experiences that you have that actuarial employers will, will really like. It will show you how to turn your past experience into very relevant actuarial experience, all that kind of stuff. So if you are a member, go sign or go log in and watch this course because it's really going to help you get your resume figured out. If you're not a member, of course you can join. I will leave a link to where you can join the Actuary Accelerator community right down below in the description. Okay. Now, 
I do have another video on YouTube that is all about how to boost your actuarial resume. Again, I will leave that in the, in the description if you'd like to watch it. However, it doesn't go into a whole much, a whole ton more details than I've already gone to into. The best way to get more details about this would be in the actuary accelerator community in that course that I talked about. Okay, so tell me, what is the number one thing you are going to go do to fix up your resume right now? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be reading all those, chatting back with you and helping you make sure that your resume really stands out for actuarial employers. If you love this video, give it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye.